ChatGPT keeps on getting better. And the reason it's better now is because other companies are coming into the fold, right? Other companies are starting to interact with ChatGPT's model, making our lives as SEOs, as website developers, as website owners even easier. In this video, I'll teach you how to use the Wolfram language. This thing has been around since 1988. It's one of the most sophisticated languages online. It's a database. It has like real data where ChatGPT used to have a hard time with specificity. The Wolfram language can step in its place and create articles for us, create data-driven articles that are absolutely incredible. So I'm going to teach you how to use this thing so that we can rank higher on Google so we can make more money online. So let's jump into it. Now we're going to come back to ChatGPT. You know, Wolfram can do some crazy things and can do illustrations. I'm going to show you for SEO, make our lives easier. But to start at the start, look here. This is the Wolfram website just released. It gives us an overview. I'll have the link in the description. Um, look, it can do illustrations. It does date and time, genealogies, mathematical functions. Insane. So recently, I actually was at Barnes & Noble and I bought this book without knowing that he was gonna release the, the ChatGPT plugin. I just didn't know. And what he was explaining in the book was that ChatGPT has a hard time with data, the specificity of data. You would think a big model wouldn't have a problem with that, but it does. But Wolfram doesn't because their database is, is based upon entities that they've somehow magically, it's above my pay grade, right? But they do not have an issue where ChatGPT does. So if you combine the two, if you combine the two, all of a sudden you have a supercomputer for free, basically. So to begin, we're gonna ask it, what can you do, right? Output a table basically saying exactly what you can do. And it says, sorry, I'm just too big of a model to give you a table, but here's some things that you can consider. It says mathematical calculations is what Wolfram excels at, statistical analysis, data retrieval, that's very useful, unit conversions, date and time calculations. And furthermore, I said, what about SEO, right? What about SEO? And it says, you know, the Wolfram language model is, is not specifically designed for SEO, but it can do these things. And this is where the money lies for us. Data analysis, web scraping, text analysis, all these things. And all of a sudden, my, my brain is going like, ooh, we've got something here, right? So I'm going to show you the experiments I've run and what you can do. And, and keep in mind, this is just beginning. So if you have any cool prompts, put them in the comments. Let's all learn from each other. We're going to combine two plugins. Look up here. We have this one here, that's WebPilot. We've done a video on that, very powerful, and we're gonna use Wolfram, right? But I wanna show you something with WebPilot. Check this out, I asked it a question. I said, what can the WebPilot plugin do? Output a table, same prompt as before. This is from this channel, AI Advantage, incredible channel, check them out. Um, but it says, sure, here's a table that lists the functions of WebPilot. This is important, right? There's one function for WebPilot and it's visit web page. The whole purpose of WebPilot is to visit web page, right? You can do a lot of things, but if you combine visit web page with Wolfram, now we're in business. So here's our first test. Using WebPilot, do this thing. And then using Wolfram, do this thing. And that's a very important. Before I show you exactly what the words are, you can dictate. Say, do this with this plugin and then do this. You're kind of creating like a systematic approach to this. You have a little army of robots working for you. So using WebPilot, search Google SERPs for the top results on this keyword, the best beaches in Orange County. Using Wolfram, analyze the headers and provide the most important keywords to include in the article. So WebPilot did its thing, boom, there you go. Um, it gave us all the headers of this, that, that, that's five different articles, right? And then Wolfram, here's Wolfram, it's, it's up to bat, right? It says, I apologize for the confusion. Uh, there seems to be a misunderstanding. It said, however, based, so basically it said, I can't do SEO work, but it said, I kind of can. It said, however, based on the headers provided, we can manually identify some of the most frequently mentioned and therefore potentially important keywords for an article on this topic. Beaches include words, beach, coast, shoreline. Okay. But it gets better because I was able to fine tune this and make it better and better. So let's go into the next prompt. So using WebPilot, search Google for the top two results on the best beaches in Orange County, but then using Wolfram, analyze the headers and provide data and suggestions. So WebPilot, like usual, does its thing pretty well. We don't have to coerce it. That's a very good plug in many SEO use cases. But then, right, Wolfram was able to give us two of these. What the heck are these? Let's look at these closer and then we'll look at its suggestions. 
So what it did, it took the nine best beaches in Orange County, California to soak up the sun. That's the title. That's what shows up on the SERPs. And it said, okay, this is a noun phrase. Here's noun phrase, prepositional phrases, prepositional phrase, all these things. It broke it down into a science. And this is what Wolfram's really good at because engrams, that's how uh, ChatGPT and these models, they work, they break up words. This is how Google sees the internet. If we can understand this, the very fine details, we can rank higher in Google. And I'll show you how to do that. So it gave us two of those, and then it gave us suggestions down here. So it says, use a high number, right? If possible, include more beaches on your list. This can make your article appear more comprehensive. That's an excellent observation on the headers. And then it also says, include a selling, a unique USP, unique selling point. So both articles have a USP. One mentioned soaking up the sun, and the other mentioned that's been updated for 2023. Think about what unique aspect you can bring to your article. That's so good. Uh, it, can, it gives suggestions, family-friendly beaches, secluded beaches. It says update regularly, optimize for SEO, provide high quality content and promote your article. That's pretty incredible right there to break it down into a data, but what else can it do? So this next one's insane. It's, it's a conversation I had with a tool you're gonna see. It's, it's a lot of stuff. So learn from the top three results for this, the best Orange County beaches and provide suggestions for header structure for an ultimate article for the SERP for SEO. So this year, the best Orange County beaches, it gave us this outline for an article. And this SERP right here is something that I use in the masterclass. I've done hours of research on this type of template. This is really good. It's very good. This is very good 80-20. I mean, this took us two seconds. It could have cut out probably an hour of my time. But the reason it's good is check this out. So it says intro, of course, an intro, but the top beaches. So it took all the top beaches. These truly are the top beaches. Like it used data to, to get that. Furthermore, it said special features of Orange County beaches. It said the best for swimming, for tradi traditional experience and cleanliness. That's good. People want to know that. And then how hard would it would have been for me to figure out which ones have tide pools, right? There's no way that's, that's very good. So if you can combine this with conventional templating, great work. Then furthermore, I said, using this data, give suggestions for what to talk about basically in each subheading. Did a really good job here. So the top beaches in Orange County, um, talk about a brief description, highlight unique features, popular activities. We did this in the masterclass. I mean, the masterclass has way more specificity, but this is good 80-20. This is not bad. Uh, special features for uh, Orange County beaches, discuss the unique aspects. Uh, Huntington, discuss its suitability for swimming safety measures. It's given us exactly what to talk about based upon the other competitors. Uh, exploring tide pools for each beach, discuss tide pools, the best time to visit them. This is good, but here's where it gets fun. Using Wolfram, is there any relevant data for this topic you can provide? So all I asked was, is there any relevant data? I gave it a, a softball, just give me some data about what we just talked about. And I said, sure, here's some relevant data about the climate. And it gave us this graph. That's super cool. We can plot, pl put that right in the article. That's not hard to do at all. Look, here's the, you know, in January, you're considering coming, it's gonna be around 60 degrees Fahrenheit. You're coming in May, like visuals. I always speak about visuals in articles because it really helps the user experience. Now we have data-driven visuals that we can back up with words and this, oh man, it's good. So then I said, what other data can you provide visually to help users get the most value out of this blog post? All right, here's additional data about the population of Orange County, which can provide context, right? Blah, 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 is approximately 3.168. This is where Wolfram excels. This data here is very accurate. All right. It gives us a graph. It says the population growth is 0.58% per year. Da, da, da. Very specific. And I said, what else? What else? And it said, here are some additional data about the uh, area of Orange County. Blah, blah, blah. Let's see. The total area is approximately this big. Eh, that's okay. Can you provide any visual data for tourism? And then WebPilot tried to answer, right? And then I said, using Wolfram, can you provide any visual data? So I had to specify, and then I got tapped out because ChatGPT4 unfortunately has a limit, like 25 um, requests per hour or something really stinks. So I put a request in to give um, more allowance from my account. Hopefully they will. That'd be great because it'll make these videos better. But as you can see, I mean, that little, this little exercise here, wow, I am impressed. This can make an article have the difference between top search results and not. So now we have a really good template, right? What can we do with it? Well, we can push it to the custom article workflow. It's coming out soon. Make sure to join the newsletter if you want access to this. But all you would have to do is come over here, grab all these things, right? Push it here. Not bad, right? You could say 
Orange County Beaches, the best. Orange County Beaches, you know, there you go. And we could use the suggestions on previous prompts. You can put some LSIs here. You can create conversational style length four and let it roll. And then you can push URLs over here. Not hard to do at all. And the output, as we've seen, a lot of users have been telling us, look, the output's awesome, giving us little tweaks, suggestions. I want you to use, there is an iteration of this already. I'll have a link in the description, the quick article workflow. It, it, it doesn't allow for headers, but it does allow for a very good, it's an 80-20 type of rule. If you just want to roll with it fast, you don't want to do the research like we have in this video, fine. Just do this, roll with it. I'm doing this on some websites as testing it, and they do rank, right? It depends on the niche. It depends on the website and how you structure, interlink, all these things like we teach here. But listen, if you like this, make sure to subscribe, like it, share with a friend, have a master class. You can check that out. People who have the master class will, people who sign up for the master class will have a lifetime membership to the custom article workflow when it releases. And all these things are happening, right? Trying to do more and more videos, trying to stay on top of the trend of ChatGPT, AI writing, SEO, all these things. So please subscribe. Um, let's see if we can get 20,000 subscribers by the end of the month. And anyways, I appreciate you. Thank you for the community. You all are great. Uh, make sure to create a piece of content today because that's the bottom line. That's how you further your SEO initiative. That's how you rank higher. You need to do something today to create something new out there. So go out there and get it, and I'll see you on the next one.